All right, here we are. So we all know that in every guild, there can be a big difference in player skill between your best and your worst players. So this started getting me thinking, if I could pick a class for every type of player in my guild, what classes would I put my best and worst players on? So again, the premise here of this ranking isn't to rank the classes themselves, but rather what type of player would I ideally have play which class? So let's get started just rearranging these tiers a little bit. The S tier I'm gonna call this is this is God's gift to EverQuest. This guy can do friggin everything in the game. He'll take charge of any role that we assign him on raids. He's going to keep pulls going, make pulls happen, pick up ads as they come in quickly and consistently debuff mobs, refresh buffs without being ass, absolutely cranks overall raid healing and damage. Comes up with creative solutions to problems in the game that might seem challenging or impossible to the average player. Uh, and then this guy's going to do competitive damage on classes that you wouldn't normally expect to see at the top of the list. All right, for the A tier, we're going to call this guy. This is the A team. This is the kind of person that you can just assign any raid job to without fear of getting it just completely screwed up. Just simple things like ramp tanking basic pulling, tank swapping, executing a chill chain, um, those kinds of things. Uh, this guy's also gonna probably refresh buffs without being asked. He's also gonna do really good damage and healing, but he might not be, he might not be in like the top, like one to three slots, but he's gonna be up there. All right, for the B tier, this, this guy we're gonna call the attentive, mediocre, gamer all right so you you know this guy he's he's at the computer he's playing the game um he's gonna respond pretty quickly to tells but he's not gonna just do stuff without being asked he's not going to refresh buffs without being asked um you might sometimes have to remind him to like slow a mob or debuff a mob um he has some idea of what the fuck is going on on any given raid night so this basically puts him already just Right there, he's in like in the top 10% of EQ players just with that. But his actual skill level and able to rise to the occasion during like important moments, uh, during groups or raids is just average at best. He might mess up simple mechanics like a tank swap or a chill chain sometimes. He does pretty good damage and healing, but he's never like the top, like top, top five um, parts of, uh, any given class. Even if he's on like a monk in early game, he's, he's still, he's just not going to be in like the top five. All right. For the C tier, we're going to call this the washed gamer dad. This guy, he, he's going to show up 80% RA. It's great. But the problem is wheel of fortune is on during raid time. So he, this guy's not really paying attention. Every time this guy queues up his mic and you know, this guy, every time there's always one, every time he queues up his mic, you're going to hear the TV on in the background. That's like several decibel levels louder than it should be. He does mid tier damage and healing, even on like overtuned classes for the era. He's like basically AFK for the raid, but he can still somehow kind of just perform at an acceptable level as kind of a raid passenger. He consistently will forget to do things like debuff mobs or even just get buffs for himself. He won't send tells for buffs. He'll just be like, half buffed going into raid fights, won't buff his pets, those kinds of things. This guy's never, never going to swap targets during a raid, regardless of a raid leader call. I think this is a pretty common raider in a lot of guilds. All right, for the D tier, we're gonna call this guy Irma Lost. <laughs> All right, you know this guy. This guy cannot reliably make the run from like common lands to soul B to go kill Nagafin. He's going to somehow die to Nariak guards or fall in the lava pit or something. Like He just cannot get anywhere without holding, being having his hand held. If you ever find yourself saying just summon them more than once a raid, once Koth is in the game, this is this guy. If you just find yourself automatically putting him with a mage because you're going to have to summon them so much, this is that guy. They'll buff you quickly if you send a tell, like they're a helpful player, but never expect anything to happen with this person without having asked. This guy also always needs to med despite doing like next to no damage and no healing and just seems to be almost a non-contributor. 
He's always out of mana, and before a fight starts, he he says that he needs to med. Oh yeah, this guy this guy also is the one that complains that they can never get a group while there's like seven people in guild chat or OOC saying that they're looking for a group, just refuses to take any initiative to form a group whatsoever. All right, on to the F tier. <laughs> this guy, all right, this is the this guy is has the APM of a sloth. In the brain function of a goldfish. This is the bottom tier EverQuest player. And this is that guy that if you actually go and look at his parses, he pushes like over the course of a raid, just he, he just literally pushes 5% of the buttons that like God's gift to EverQuest will push. Uh, he can't do any mechanic properly. If there's any mechanic whatsoever that he has to do, he will fail it, kill the raid or die. Um, you basically just have to ignore their existence in the raid and move them, actually actively move them out of the way of raid mechanics. Never ask them to do a job. They're at the very bottom of the list on DPS and or healing, whatever they're playing, because they're just not pressing buttons, basically. Um, and then this, this person also on raids is going to ask just like the dumbest possible question, like every fight, and then still do it wrong and die anyway. All right, so now we kind of know what we're looking at here. Let's start ranking these classes. And these are in no particular order, so we're just going to go uh, kind of one by one. All right, so let's start with the uh, bards. Bards are interesting because you can kind of use them as an AFK bot and do a lot of stuff with them. Like, they're very beneficial for the raid um, and for groups just as an AFK bot. We see boxers constantly doing this, but the, the high end of this class is actually quite high. They can get a lot of stuff done. They can pull really well, really knowing how some of their like debuffs work. Um, they can slow in a pinch. They can swap different songs depending on the situation. They actually have to communicate with like someone in the raid to know which bard is playing which song. Man, I, I think they're not going to be topping damage for a while or even close, but I think that if I could, I think I'm going to put this guy, I think I'm going to put this guy on like, th the thing is there's not a lot of raid jobs that a bard has to do other than they can assist with pulls and they're actually very good pullers despite most guilds heavily using monks. When Once the bard gets fade, they're very good pullers. Yeah. I, I'm gonna put this in I'm gonna put this in the A team for now because they really just don't have a lot of raid jobs. Alright, next we got Berserkers. Now these guys do friggin' insane amounts of damage if you have a good player on them once they come out. Uh primarily like in Omens of War once they get the the epic. Uh but I mean there's just not that complicated of a class. You do need them to push their discs when you have like a well formed like melee group to make sure everyone's like doing the most damage possible. Man, I kind of want this guy in my A team as well, to be honest. I want him to pump damage. I want him to push his friggin' button so that the entire melee group does good damage. I don't want to have to remind him to push that button, um, which I think the mediocre gamer may have to be reminded sometimes. I want this guy to be a pretty good player. All right, Cleric, this is an interesting one. Um, I need my cleric to be able to functionally do a complete heal rotation. It doesn't take a lot for that to happen, but I don't really want this person to have the brain function of a goldfish. <laughs> I need this person to reliably push buttons. It's nice to sometimes have a god tier cleric, but I don't think it's necessary. I think... We just need an attentive, mediocre gamer that can mostly function in a chill chain. That's it. Okay, Beast Lord. Um, okay. Beast Lord is... Okay, Beast Lord starts off pretty slow damage-wise. Um, they don't really have any raid jobs. They'll MGB Paragon, but it's fairly minor, I would say. Later on, they get like the Ferocity line to buff melee damage and to really min-max that. Uh, you have to be paying pretty good attention. But how much do I care about this in the grand scheme of things? Not a lot. This guy's not going to be pumping mega damage. I think it's okay for this guy to be kind of like the washed gamer dad. I think this is fine. 
He's he's mostly there. He's kind of AFK. He might forget to buff his pet. He just turns on auto attack and does stuff. Um, that's gonna be good. That's gonna be good for the Beast Lord. All right, uh, Druid. Oh boy. Uh, have a little bit of an a Druid apologist. I know they're kind of bad, but um, they can do some cool stuff in groups. On raid, I think they're pretty heavily outshined by clerics and and shamans. It's nice to get their debuffs on there, but I don't know that I'm willing to sacrifice like a really good player for this slot. I think if I'm going to have to, you know, if some of, some of my players are going to be good, some of them are going to be bad. And if I'm going to pick a class to have a bad player, I'm going to I'm going to pick a druid. I don't think this is the permalost guy because <clears throat> this guy can port. So like surely he's not permalost, right? Like, surely. Like this, this guy, if I have the APM of a sloth and the brain function of a goldfish, I'm putting a druid down there. That's what I want. I don't really care what this guy does. He's at the raid. Like, he just does whatever. He doesn't have a job. He just exists. That's fine. Uh, enchanters. Enchanters are interesting as well. They occasionally ha have important raid jobs. There are some fights, not many, there's usually like one per expansion that actually needs some tr sort of chanter utility, like whether it's charm or mez or like AE stuns or something. But other than that, they don't do much on a raid. They don't do damage. They just have to buff. Uh, later on, they get like mana flare. So they have, ideally, they're going to be like buffing players with mana flare consistently and not having to be reminded a lot. I'm going to put this guy... I want this guy to be like an attentive mediocre gamer. I want I want him to actually be like buffing people without being asked and being able to like be aware of when his job uh, does come up and like he's actually able to do the task. Mage. Okay. So what does mage have to do? Like mage can help Mallow. Um, like ideally in a raid, I think a shaman would cast the unresistible mallow and then a mage would be the one that's following up with the mala the resistible line mage should also be casting mod rods um i think good mages will do it like on a timer because like good players will be clicking their mod rods on cd but also just being able to at least quickly drop a mod rod an ae mod rod when asked or when a player sends them a tell they'll quickly you know give that person a mod rod i think that's pretty valuable you know they've got their pet they got to manage their pet they got to buff their pet but i think that if i'm going to i i don't this guy doesn't have like super important rage jobs like at the end of the day the shaman can the shaman can like do the mages like raid job mostly so i think this guy can also kind of be like the washed gamer dad he's He's there, he's present, he mostly performs. He'll do things when asked, but he just kind of does mid-tier damage and most of the time mages do mid-tier damage. So um, I think that's fine. All right, Monk. Um, Monk, I think is gonna be our first. So th this guy does, Monks do insane damage. So the funny thing is you can have Monks in your guild that are like this perma lost wash gamer dad, attentive mediocre gamer like these guys. And they're, uh, they will legitimately not be like in your top five DPS, uh, despite this class being completely busted for a while. Um, so really, I think you want this guy to be, you want this guy to be God's gift to EverQuest because not only does this guy do insane damage, this guy can make pulls happen. Uh, he keeps, he keeps the flow of the raid going. Um, he can execute hard pulls. He can do things that you might not think is possible. He can tank in a pinch. And he's just going to do insane damage on your raid. All right, Necro. Necro, I wouldn't say is a hard class, but they do have a lot of, you know, a lot of dots that they need to cast, you know, once not everything is resisted all the time. They've got a pet to manage. They've got mana pumps. I think that this guy can, I think this is like a, a guy where if you put him down here, he's going to do really bad damage. Um, most of the time, but I think if you put him up here, he's going to do really good damage. They also have Feign Death, they have, uh, they have the Res. They can pull some things off that other classes can't. I think that I'm going to put... He doesn't really have any raid jobs. That's the thing. He doesn't have any raid jobs other than just kind of doing damage and do, doing some pumping here and there, maybe. 
Like, I don't even know if that's really much needed anymore. I I'm going to kind of put him on the attentive mediocre gamer. I think that's fair. I think if he's higher, then he's going to do a bit more damage, maybe a lot more damage. But in terms of like importance on a raid, I think I kind of want that in, in this mid tier. All right. We still don't have a perma lost guy. <laughs> it's hard to put people down here. So let's see. We've got the Pally. Uh, Pally is a great off tank. I think that, and then their main raid job is usually like ramp tanking, which like these days it's, it's kind of whatever, like mobs are so much easier that I feel like anyone can really ramp tank now. Uh, usually, you yeah, know, you're going to put that Pally on there with Divine Aura, the DA hammer. I think the big thing is, okay, let's say this guy is your ramp tank. The, the important thing about ramp tanking is just the transition of pulling the mob, getting him to the tank spot, being DA, and like making that tank, initial tank transition happen. Like that's his job. And if he fucks that up, then it makes the raid actually quite challenging because if he's constantly dying on the pull, ramp's gonna be loose. That can cause problems. The tra tank transition can be a mess. He could pull it to the wrong spot. Like I've seen this happen, like despite this sounding like a very simple job. And then I think, I think having good tanks, at least good off tanks, I think is really important because that's what keeps your raid moving during like trash clears. It's your pullers and your off tanks. As many mobs as these guys can pick up, the pullers can come in faster. But if the pullers are pulling mobs in and the mobs are just going wild all over the raid, people are gonna die. The pullers are gonna feel like they're training your raid and they can't pull anymore. They're gonna have to wait. So I think this guy is actually quite important. I think, I think putting him on the A team is good. Having an A team paladin, even though these guys are not doing a lot of damage, not doing a lot of healing, I think they have an important raid job. I think they have two important raid jobs. And uh, I think that's gonna make your raid a lot smoother. Okay, the Ranger. Ranger's another good one. This guy is going to do good damage and he has an important raid job, which is weapon shield. In a lot of fights, we're gonna have like some initial weapon shield type shenanigans going on for aggro building. So he could be actually the pull transition guy instead of the pally in some cases, but that even makes the pally more valuable because in that case, like the pally has to pull first and then the Ranger needs to taunt him like taunt the raid target, get the raid target onto him with weapon shield up, not to die during that, which also I have seen happen, which screws up everything. Build the aggro and then execute that tank swap in the pr proper spot. So that's an important raid job. And then there's also a lot of fights where, you know, kiting, snares, roots um, can be valuable. So this guy, I think it's nice to have this guy be a pretty good player. He also have, has a lot of buffs to give out. So this guy, <sighs> I don't, he doesn't need to be God's gift to EverQuest. I think it's nice to have him on the A team. Who do I have left down here? I have a rogue, an SK, a shaman, a wizard, and a warrior. I think it's okay. I think let's put this on the A team. I would like an A team ranger. That makes things smoother for me. Okay, the rogue. The rogue is... I mean, this is not a hard class, guys. I mean, he auto attacks and he backstabs. And once you get backstab... Uh, or once you get into, I don't know what level it is now, it used to be like 61, maybe it's lower now, you get the ability to just do auto skill. So this guy's auto backstabbing, all he does is, all he has to do is stand there, he has no utility. Corpse drags used to be a thing, but it's not anymore, I don't, and that wasn't really particularly skillful anyway. I think this guy can be permalost, like this is fine. Like, he's not gonna do, often he's not gonna do like super top tier damage anyway, he'll do... He, he could be in like the top five to 10 if he's like a good player, but it's okay. We've got Berserker, we've got our Berserker and we've got our Monk up here in like the top tiers. Like these guys are gonna crank, our Ranger's gonna crank. Uh, this guy's fine, he can be permalost. This guy can die on the way to Soul B somehow despite having Invis, like, and complains that he can never get a group. Like that's fine, that's that guy. All right, SK, uh, I think SK, it's nice to have him be God's gift at request. This guy is, this class is super flexible with what it can do. It can off tank, which again, we talked about how value, but valuable that is with the pally. He can feign death, which is cool. And he is, so he can do, he can help pull in some situations. Um, 
Like one good example that he can help pull on is like the Wraith Council, it's really good. The other thing that he can do is kite. He is, the Pally can kite too, and the Ranger can kite in some situations, but the, the SK has the fastest snap aggro, instant cast aggro, whereas the Pally has, and the Ranger both have to cast. So he, this guy can just get on his super speed mount and cast um, instant cast aggro spells get aggro on mobs and kite them really effectively. They also get AE aggro but way before pallies in like DODH I think maybe. And that's also really good for just big AE snap aggro that just helps keep fights under control. So someone that really knows how to play this class can do a lot of stuff. All right, Shaman. Who? Um, Shaman. Shaman has a lot going on. They're, I would say they are a class I would not want on the APM of a sloth. Like this is one of the most active classes in the game. They can do a lot of stuff. They can do pretty good damage with dots. They obviously have all of their buffs. They have two different types of healing that they can do uh, with the heal over time and the direct heals. And they have like some shorter term buffs like champion and whatever that proccing spell is that, that makes people proc uh, damage um, Puma later on. So that requires a little bit more attentiveness. And then the, they also have their Epic 2.0 buff that needs to be clicked at the right time to maximize damage with the melee group. So this, and oh yeah, and they have to debuff the mob with uh, Mallow and maybe Mala if your if you're, um, mage is a washed gamer dad, dad, and you've got to slow the mob and keep him slowed. Don't let the slow fall off. Um, and during trash, uh, be slowing that stuff too. A lot of a lot of time you'll hear guilds like ask like, "Hey, can you slow this stuff? Slow this stuff!" Like your ta our tanks are getting smacked. So I think this is a good class to have up here. I'm gonna say I, I would like this guy to be God's gift to EverQuest. That would be amazing. I think a really good shaman can do a lot of stuff. They also have roots to help in a pinch too. All right, a uh, wizard, man. I've seen some wizards do good damage. I've seen wizards do really bad damage. I think that it depends a lot on player skill, depends on the era that you're in. But this guy, I don't think this guy is a huge difference maker. I do want him to be like, you know, he needs to be semi, oh, like attentive. We need him to do some ports. I think this guy can kind of be like the washed gamer dad. I think that's fine. I can put him down a little lower. That's fine. All right, the warrior. This is interesting. And I had this conversation with a friend the other day that the to me the war so the warrior is important like the, it's important that the warrior exists and is there to tank a mob. I need my warrior to press the defensive button and the furious button. Okay, that's that's like about it. The other thing that I need this person to be able to do is I need this person to be able to spam the stand key on feign death mobs which sounds very simple, right? But I think every guild that I've been in, most of my warriors have struggled with this. So on those mobs that feign death you and you lose aggro, where you can like, you can cheese it by standing immediately and not lose the aggro. These people constantly struggle with this and it's really frustrating, <laughs> but I don't know, like if I had to choose, I'd rather have my knights be at kind of like that top tier A team level. And I think the warrior, I think it's okay for this guy to be a little lower. Like this dude literally just has to stand in a corner and push like two buttons. You need to play the game and like get gear and stuff. But I don't need you to be, I don't need you to be God's gift to EverQuest. If I had to choose, I'd rather have other classes up there. I definitely do not want this guy to be the brain function of goldfish. Like he, he's got to be a little smarter than that. I don't want this guy to be the permalos guy. He could be the washed gamer dad. I'm kind of between the attentive mediocre gamer and the washed gamer dad. I think that... I mean, I, I would want him to be here, to be honest. Like, I think here would be acceptable. I think it'd be acceptable to have this guy be a washed gamer dad. He's not going to be your best warrior. I think having him like in that tier is okay, is pretty good. Having him be just an attentive, mediocre gamer. He's got some idea of what's going on. He might occasionally fuck up like a tank swap or something, but he mostly can do okay. And he can just kind of play the game. Like this, like, like I said earlier, this guy, in this category, you're already in like the top 10% of, of players, right? Down here, you're, down here, you're, uh, you're not doing too hot. Okay. All right. So that's my list. When I'm looking at this, I think 
it's in some ways similar. It is actually similar in terms of like class strength. The strongest classes in the game are definitely like Shaman, SK, Monk, Ranger. I mean, in some ways, like Enchanter is super strong, but it has like more, it's more like in a group game situation. And in the raid game, it's not as important. I mean, I could even, I, I would say you could maybe even drop Enchanter down. So that's kind of interesting that, you know, then Druid's down at the bottom. <laughs> um, so here you go. This is uh, this is the tier list. If I had to choose, this is where I would put um, my best play. I would put my best players on these classes up here at the at the top, and uh, everyone else like just doesn't matter quite as much. These guys up here, if these guys are doing pretty good, then um, we're gonna get pretty far on our raids. There you go. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, and see ya.